Hello, I'm Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. Welcome to video C of the male reproductive system. Here we're going to focus on the different regions of the urethra, as well as the erectile tissues in the penis. I already mentioned in a previous video that the urethra in the male has a dual function. Uh, after all, it arises from the bladder, so it guides out the urine, but at the same time, it's also going to collect the sperm cells and the seminal fluid together that forms the semen, which is, of course, what is ejaculated. Let's first take a look at the three major regions of the urethra. The three regions of the urethra are referred to as the prostatic urethra, then we have the membranous urethra, and finally we have the spongy urethra, which we can also call the penile urethra. So let me point those out a little bit better. So the prostatic urethra, urethra is going to be that portion that is still within the prostate from their prostatic. Uh, then we have a very short region of the urethra called the membranous urethra, which is in between the prostate and the beginning of the, the penis, which we call the bulb. So really just this little section here. And then finally we have the urethra within the penis here, which is surrounded by this erectile tissue here, which is called a, a spongy tissue. We'll give it a more specific name in just a moment. From there that, that we refer to it as the spongy urethra, but it's often also called the penile urethra. So those are the different regions of the urethra in the male. If we look at the external anatomy of the penis, we see that the tip of the penis is slightly enlarged. We refer to that as the glans penis, which is very sensitive. It has many nerve endings. And in an uncircumcised penis, it is covered by what we, in layman's terms, call, call the foreskin, or in more anatomical terms, we call the prepuce. So it's really a color of skin that stretches over the glans penis, and it's full of nerve endings, again, making that part of the penis rather sensitive. It also helps protect and lubricate that part of the penis. Now, in some parts of the world, it's common practice to um, go through circumcision, but that's not the case for all religions or all cultures. Um, for instance, in the United States, it's not really dependent on religion to circumcise boys. And uh, in this day and age, parents often have to make sometimes a difficult decision of going through with circumcision or not. So circumcision in the United States in particular came about to help prevent um, infections. We now have such good hygiene uh, that more than likely circumcising a boy is not going to have that much of a, uh, an impact in protecting him from venereal diseases or, or urinary tract infections, uh, various pathogens. But again, this is a, a personal decision. This is a decision you need to make as a parent together with a doctor. Um, but again, this is not common practice across the world. For instance, in Europe, most men are not circumcised. Let's take a look now at the special tissues we call erectile tissues that are present in the penis so that the penis can become hard or erect. So surrounding the urethra, we have the so-called corpus spongiosum. And then in addition to that, we have two big cylinders that run along the length of the penis that are collectively referred to as the corpora cavernosa. Corpora is plural for corpus. Remember, corpus refers to body in, in Latin. So if we look at this on a flaccid penis here, then we see the urethra here, and it is surrounded by the spongy erectile tissue, better called the corpus spongiosum. Remember, that's why this urethra portion is called the spongy urethra. It extends all the way into the glans penis. And then we see the one of the cylinders here in this mid-sagittal view called, um, one of them would be called the corpus cavernosum. Now, <clears throat> just as a quick little side note, 
This is referred to as the dorsal side of the penis, and this is referred to as the ventral side of the penis. Now, if you think about this, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So these terms, dorsal and ventral, actually apply to an erect penis. In a clinical setting, you'll hear the term perineum quite often, both for your female and, and male patients, and it really refers to a region in the body. So let's take a look at this. The perineum is a diamond-shaped region that includes the coccyx right here, meaning the tailbone area, then the two ischial tuberosities, and, and if you don't know what those are, put your fingertips, if you're sitting, that is, put your fingertips underneath your buttocks and feel for the hard bone protruding through your buttocks. Those are bone markings called the ischial tuberosities. And then finally, where your two pubic bones meet, which is kind of masked by the, the penis here, that is where we have our pubic symphysis. So the pubic symphysis, the coccyx, and then the two ischial tuberosities, they form this region we refer to as the perineum. And so notice that this includes, in the case of the male, the anus, as well as the beginning of the penis, essentially. We finished looking at the testes with the epididymis, as well as the ductal system in the male. So we're now ready to move on to studying the sex glands that help produce the seminal fluid.